Good morning, everyone. I'm Antti Kivivalli. Um, I'm a trainer. I work for Sovelto, so I'm a salaryman for uh, the training center that is based here in Helsinki and is one of the sponsors. Uh, although uh, we have a branch in Tampere, so I come from another town, came yesterday morning and uh, we'll leave tomorrow afternoon. And uh, we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, I think these kind of occasions are great. I think I've said it to a few of you already that uh, when you let trainers sit and talk, the problem is that they won't stop. Mm. And that's okay for me because I'm a trainer as well. And um, of course we talk about the technology and we talk about this and that, but uh, in our work we are often in a classroom or we are online with our headphones on and we are like alone while well, we have the participants there uh, but uh, we cannot discuss all the things and we are with the people so it's kind of like strange situation and of course it may also have a part there that we uh, are trainers that we are people who for some reason um, like to talk, I hope, and um, so um, we are using this sometimes too much. If I'm using this talking too much, um, so you are free to interrupt. Raise, if you are polite people, you may raise your hands, and you, if you want to talk, just go freely. But the question is, how did we get here? So maybe I will first, before you start talking this morning, uh, say something how it's very slow playing animations I get here. Um, how did I end up here? Of course there's also the question why. Um, uh, so I was uh, born in Finland. Why is this so slow? In the 60s so I've lived in Finland in the 70s, going to school. What is this? There's supposed to be text. This is how the technology fails. This is simple PowerPoint presentation. And uh, this is stupid. There's no. Oh, come on. Just bringing the blocks without the text shouldn't be. Let's see what happens if I go to the end of it will bring me the text. No, no. <laughs> How can you fail with PowerPoints? This is the way. Uh, I think we discussed this yesterday that uh, um, If something goes wrong, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, continue as you would. This is so funny. Somebody might say. Yeah. I'm supposed to be one. I haven't told you yet, but I'm an... Uh, Office, office trainer. Yeah, it did. It, and the first two slides, you saw them. This is the third one. Okay. We go there. And we go there. And we go there. And we get nothing. Whoa! Okay, so in the 60s it happened that I was born here in Finland, I lived in Finland, went to school. Uh, in the 80s I attended the technical university, biomedical engineering and so on, but because I didn't graduate, so I ended up doing all kinds of odd jobs in the 90s. And one of the jobs was that I started to teach basic IT skills. So I'm not an IT pro, 
But I think what happens in the classroom or in the training applies for everyone. So that's why I think I'm entitled to talk here as well. And that has now continued through the 2000, 2010, who knows what's there. And of course, uh, one reason why I'm still here is that I got married at some point. My wife thinks it's a good idea to have one job and not like 15 during one year. Okay, so that's how I, how I got here. But uh, was somebody here educated to be a trainer or a teacher? You were. Oh, many, like 10% at least. That's nice. Uh, what would you say about your training or education to be a teacher or trainer and the uh, work that you are doing now? What is the relationship? How beneficial or...? Well, I, s I started as a trainer first and then got an education as a teacher. So went the other way around. Okay. But that has uh, sort of helped with you know, grasping how people actually learn things. Yeah. Any other experiences or opinions? Well, there's a, there's a difference between technical training and uh, sort of learning. Yeah. That was, that was my uh, experience. And uh, the point that you're asking there is a good difference between layered and active learning and technical training. Yeah. Yeah, but in this field, many of us don't have the formal education. And uh, it's also understandable because it's a technical matter. So we, um, we have learned some skills or by chance we end up being here in the front or with the headphones on. And uh, we know the stuff, we know the substance somewhat. Yesterday, we, I think we agreed that you can't know everything. You can't know every possible scenario that somebody will present you. And even if you are a top class consultant, to solve that in a few minutes, tough one. Yeah. So we know what we know, but we are here to part the knowledge and information that we have uh, as per the plan. Yeah. What is the target of a certain training? And um, and uh, that's our skill. So what do you think in our past helps us? Besides education, which is good, you learn things about how people are learning. Anything else? What has helped you to be uh, in your work as a trainer? Yeah. Mistakes, yeah, we discussed this also yesterday. Mistakes. I have done that. Yeah, <laughs> I have to admit. Yeah, and Seth has. Other people's mistakes. Other people's mistakes, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I've seen them. And you've seen the, the instructor do all the wrong things, and you say to yourself, I can teach this class better. Right? Okay, yeah, you have, you have that idea, yeah? Yeah? And somebody else had something in the past that can help you to be in the situation where you are the trainer and you are imparting th something. Yeah. One of my biggest resources. Yeah. Because I, every day I pick things up. Okay. And then I found help. Okay. Yeah. I was for English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I hear comments that you must be very patient with your children because you are so patient here in the classroom, although we make mistakes. That's not the case. <laughs> it's different, but yes, uh, Seth has something. Yeah, based, based on your background, and, and we have similar backgrounds where we work a lot of odd jobs in our class. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah? I think so too. Uh, it has happened that uh, when I was still a student in the 80s, I had a summer job at a company. So now I go there and train. So I can tell that I know the business that you are doing here because back, way back 25 years ago I was here. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can relate, people can relate to you and all this. No. Uh, but with the children, um, I find it different. But of course there are some similarities. But this is also about uh, teaching learning, teaching learning people uh, in the classroom. We often get this uh, feeling that uh, somebody said yesterday when you walked here said that oh we are back to school because this is like tables in a classroom. And that happens to people. Now we don't have the computers here. People who went to school in the uh, 70s and 80s, they didn't have computers in the classroom. No. <laughs> Did you? We got the first one at the Technical University, 80 something. So um, I wouldn't say that we had a classroom with computers. Uh, so um, this is also, the background is also with uh, participants and expectations, what will happen here. I will, there's the guy in the front, he will talk and we will just sit and listen and then we will learn something. Okay, that's uh, how school often works. And there have been good teachers in the past, there are good teachers now and so on, but uh, uh, that's the traditional setup. Okay. Okay, forget the past. Uh, there's the future. Um, we've heard this. There will be a change. Everybody says there will be a change. There's always change. Okay? So what will change? Okay. Can you say more about this uh, different way of teaching? Well, for me, it's going to be a challenge to take the uh, drawing to the drawing and using the electricity and the things. Yeah. Then being behind the computer and uh, then using the phone. That's going to be yeah. challenging. And also, I want to take the other phone to make this and to make it into a more normal part. Yeah, I think so too, and that has happened to me as well. Does somebody else have something else? Yeah. You're not ready for online training. I have tried. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. It's not a fear. There's all kinds of things you don't get them in your online. It's just you can't get behind the computer. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. My question is the best way people learn to change. We're talking about a method, a delivery method. Yeah. That's for us different. Yeah. But does it actually change the way people learn? Yes. So what is changing? This comes up because the world is changing, the software is changing, and the setup of learning is changing. Yeah, but something remains. The human mind, very similar, like it was, I think, two million years ago. Yeah, at least my mind. I don't think it really changes the way people learn. Yeah, yeah, maybe Seth has a minute.
Starters didn't like the idea of going virtual at first, but they had to because it was the only way that they were going to stay employed. We found that the shift going from instructor-led training, which is the way that most people like to be trained, had to go virtual. And in the virtual environments, it's very funny, uh, people could stay at home and log on to their computers and learn a class. But instead, they didn't want to do it because there's too many distractions. They got the dog, they got the baby, they got the stay-at-home husband, right? They've got the TV going on in the background. People would actually get dressed up and go to a center location to sit in a classroom to take a virtual class. And it seems counterintuitive, but it, it yeah, changes yeah. fundamentally the way that people would yeah. learn. Yeah, that's what's happening also here. Yes. So this is one change that lies ahead. So how we are delivering this. The funny thing with me is that for years I've been asking, could we please have online training? Can you please sell some online training? Because I don't want to travel in the morning, you know, get up and the, all the dogs and the kids and things, and then I get on train and travel to Helsinki and blah, blah. Can I just sit up? And after the kids and dogs are out, I would put my headset on. Now I've done it more. I've done it over the few years, every now and then. Uh, but uh, this year, and especially when I've had the uh, days when I have one and a half hours, one topic, 15 minute break, one and a half hours, next topic, half an hour break, two topics in the afternoon, it's quite tiring. <laughs> So uh, maybe it's my age, maybe it's my physics, um, uh, but uh, uh, this sitting with the headset on, at least I need a nice wireless set so I can walk around and do all these things. Uh, have you read Bill Chapman? He, he wrote in, on, on Facebook page, why must students work in the lab? Because they have done the laundry, they have done my taxes, they have done their exact on that. For, for us, it is yeah, yeah. The point is, he doesn't know that the students did the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how, can you, how can you validate what yeah. the students are doing? Yeah. That's one thing how in this setup. Yeah. And somebody was yesterday telling at the lunch table that uh, uh, he's been using an environment where you can uh, see the participants' desktops. So then you get the feedback what they are doing. They are reading the paper online or whatever. Uh, oh yes, and brain waves. Actually, I've been using uh, uh, with one client, go to training, and there's in the bar there's this uh, um, at, at, attention, yeah. If they are not, I don't know what it does, but yeah. So you can see that it's all green, and when you start talking,
talking boring things, they switch over to email and things, and then it's all red, and you notice nobody's there, and you can say, okay, bye. Yeah. But I've had no time to follow it, but I notice it every now and then. Yeah. So you get Whether feedback. Yeah. 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 And all the time we are talking about interaction, about receiving something and giving something. And now this uh, online thing, it's only one thing, but it's a big thing also. Uh, so the platforms are developing. Like I've just two days ago, I was giving training on Link. And in that company, they have cut out the voice from there. So we are using phone conferencing with Link. And with Link, like I don't know who has been there because the names come and go, and there's no system of logging the participants there because it's not a training environment. It's a, for other purposes, but they are using it. Okay. What would you say about the good skills or traits of a good trainer? Okay, <laughs> something else? Yeah. Yeah. Mark us something. Um, I have my own view, but especially there was something that Luke yesterday kind of started with someone. What makes it, someone actually asked what makes a good uh, yeah. team. And um, first thing is, what's your job? Yeah. You know, uh, are we supposed to just go through the 12 module of the course? <laughs> are we supposed to answer all the possible technical questions? Is this kind of an open forum consulting gig? Uh, are we supposed to? Uh, get people's knowledge level higher. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, first thing is probably to define what I was supposed to do, what's our mission. Okay, and after you have defined, if you would hire a trainer, how do you know if you were hiring a trainer mm -hmm. for your project, how would you know that he or she is a good trainer? Or how do you know of yourself that you're a good trainer? Yes, yeah. So here we get feedback, there we get uh, connection, and yeah. I think. I would throw a word in there. It could be inspiration. Yeah, yeah. 
Just like how you use your own personality. It must be your personality, and you must know your own weaknesses and strengths, and how, how to use that in the classroom to the purpose of, and that's where you ask it, learning and specific learning. Yeah. And we had a very interesting discussion, more or less. It was yeah. more or less instructor led in a, in a, in a bar yeah. by a Finnish lady. And uh, she had, uh, her personality was built by the fact that she had four younger brothers. That's, yeah, I know her. And I made, made a picture, and she was commanding six male MCTs all over here. It was really, really interesting to see what happened. And she said about, and she's uh, working for. Uh, so, well done. Katia, yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, can you tell her name? Or? Katia. Yeah, Katia. Okay. Yeah. And she said that um, she's, she's living training, um, SharePoint training, yeah. one day training for the last three years. And she said, for, the most important thing for me to do is to make them relax. Yeah. Because if you relax, Finnish people, oh. later on, then they're opening up for learning. Yeah. I said, well, that's sort of culture problem. Yesterday, when I said, I said, all the cultures, you need them all in. I looked for Seth. Uh, I disagree with him a lot of things. But from my cultural point of view, he was very right from his point of view. Yeah. But as I said, try to say to him, this would make me realize you need to open people up. You need to be able to use your own way of doing it. Open people up to pursue their learning. And I've learned so many ways these days that there are so many ways to do it. If I would go to Greece, I would feel miserably. Well, oh, in these days, yeah. I would very easily do it properly. The only thing is, they wouldn't find me nice, but they would. It's okay, I'm Dutch, so I don't have to. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. So I can get away with a lot of those things. Yeah, but just wait, because in the age of virtualization, you may actually have to sit at home and teach somebody from Greece and somebody from Germany. I've heard that. Yes. All in the same class. Yeah. yeah. That happened to me on Wednesday. There was one from China, few from France, in the afternoon a couple from the US, all in the same session online. And during the breaks, one lady from France really wanted to give me feedback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we get this, uh, okay, cultural differences, but differences. We are different. Okay. So, um, as a trainer, you cannot pick, I want these kind of people in my classroom, uh, but uh, we are there, we are here, we are on this planet, we are humans, we are different, so in that situation we must adjust. But you, you, you need a system, a system, a system have a flag and so You are very keen on this, I'm Dutch, ich bin Finns. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, stereotypes work partly, but uh, uh, don't expect too much or too little. If you have like a room full of Finnish engineers <laughs> and you ask a question, you can wait just nine seconds, <laughs> nine minutes, whatever. <laughs> yeah, just put a bottle of booze on there. Said the first one to no, the not all the Finns drink. No, no. I'm a Finn and I'm talking and I'm not drinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right now, okay. Yeah, yeah. Some kind of incentive then. No. No. Yeah, it's different. Actually, when it comes to cultures, uh, this is my uh, theory. Finns are strong on non verbal communication. <laughs> yeah. How come? We don't need to talk much. This came to my mind like 25 years ago. There was a Canadian guy in Finland. We were watching Finnish TV in Finnish. He didn't understand a word. And then finally he said, look now, nobody has said anything for 10 minutes in that program. And I said, yes, yeah, so what? I, can, I know what he's thinking. <laughs> and he doesn't, he doesn't agree with that. <laughs> no, he was, uh, you know, this North American, Canadian, US, we talk a lot, we talk a lot. Uh, but uh, so there are differences. And also this nonverbal, we again get back to this online. We, maybe we need to have the pulse or something visible. Maybe the flag. Maybe we get all this there in the future. Uh, virtual reality classroom. Has anybody tried like Second Life or any other virtual 
work like that. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is now my, I don't know how many. Uh, but uh, um, that might be interesting because that's mimicking and imitating the real world that we can see faces, although they would be like digital. Uh, but still, all the gestures, we, maybe we have this, uh, that uh, I'm moving my hands and my sitting here and there when I'm in the classroom, so people could see that, oh, he's restless, so I can <laughs> relax yeah, and talk. Yeah. So it's about this interaction. Training within second life would be interesting. Yeah. It's I, I guess. Yeah. And you can go to a tropical island on Second Life and... I know I want to go to the real tropical island. Yeah, yeah, it's too hot. It's too hot. Okay. Do I have anything else here? This question was already here. How do we learn? Uh, does anybody recognize the ratios that I put there? 70, 20, 10, yeah. Well, it could be anything, but this is about learning. This is actually a survey that they, I think they performed some time ago in the U.S. And it was about uh, 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 managers, how they learned their profession. And um, from the um, answers, uh, they found out that people said that 70%, of course, uh, of their professional skills they learned by doing doing the mistakes and doing the things, hands-on. It was management, okay, but still. 20% uh, they learned from watching others, watching other managers, watching others' mistakes, and so on. And 10% they learned from attending trainings and reading books, and so on. I think this is pretty realistic. You need to do something to learn it. It's somehow in the human structure that uh, we need to grasp. Actually, um, the Finnish word for understand is uh, derived from the hand. Uh, in many languages, it's about standing under. I don't know where that comes from, but uh, uh, to grasp things, uh, uh, we need to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in English. It's grasp. Yeah. That is based on grasping too. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so um, that makes us to be in the 10%, right? I think so. Yeah. Think, well, you facilitate all of it. Yeah. If you know that, and I think we know that, that we cannot, n nobody can come in, stay there for one day, five days, and leave out and can do everything about the topics, but they have got something and they need to learn it. Of course people learn in five minutes, one hour, one day, many things, but to get that into practice so that you really know it and understand, it takes time, it takes doing things. Okay? Does this bring any other ideas? I think this multi-sensory thing that was already in the beginning, this smell and sight and whip. yeah the whip. yeah if you like the whip yeah uh, uh, yeah but we are humans we are not just you know books or that I can plug in the memory stick here and now because I I have memorized it I know it yeah like, what I miss in this line, I mean, it's correct that you say you want to have it in one line, but I, I miss the three dimensionality of it. Time is also an issue. Yeah? The way you learn, I mean, I, I don't agree with these numbers within a day or within a week. Yeah. But we all know that if, some, if you told them, told them, and show them, and let them do it, if it's in time, how long do you remember? We all know if you've got a technical subject like link or, or yeah. SQL Server or whatever, if they're not starting to work with it, month, 
Yeah, actually it's hidden there. I think it's like there. That, that's why it's 70% when they were estimating that. Because the doing takes time and the time and repetition makes it. Yeah, yeah. Seth had. This yeah. is something that, uh, that I preach a lot to instructors that they forget that what we're teaching is a skill. We're teaching skill sets. It's all about muscle memory. You see something on the screen, you're going to be moving a mouse around, yeah. having on the keyboard, looking for things. And they, it does take time and practice. And in a classroom environment, the faster you get to actually practicing, is how learning is going to take place. Lecturing is not where the learning takes place. Yeah. And a, a lot of the times it's usually instructors showing what they already know, what they've already practiced, and not allowing the student to get the experience in the classroom. And that time is very, very valuable. The students have to start practicing learning. Yeah. Yeah. And when we have this time, and we know that repetition works, but in like a one day training, five day training, you cannot repeat all the things that many times. Yeah. So we have to accept and maybe say it aloud that uh, we will go through this once, but this is really important, but it, it will take us one hour. But this is the thing that you want to practice later. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they have to think about what, what is yeah. yeah, that can be really effective, and it depends on people. I've met people who really require that A, I explain everything, B, I show everything, and C, I even tell them, do this now, do now this. And if you look like mock uh, labs, they are always like one click. Stop. Oh, okay. When I have been, because I, I use mock only for project, which is not of good quality, and I've attended some windows way back. Uh, so they were really this simple do this, do this, which is in a way good, but it's not really helping you to think. Uh, Okay. At the end of the module, or the mid in the middle of the module, there's, they tell you what to do and not how to do it. And at the end of the book, also the drawing module, you've got the lab answer keys. Okay. And then they say click by click. Yeah. We all know that you have to point out the students to both. Yeah. And you need to help them. Okay. Because some think I can do it this way and they can't. The other ones, they can do it in the, the higher way and they don't trust themselves and they just start clicking. Yeah. Yeah. And then they. At least what you are. Yeah. Responsibility to make sure they use the right one. Yeah. The right moment. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's facilitated right now. Yeah. The other thing I don't like is the, the Arvata Reader. It doesn't help you switch between those. Yeah. On paper, you can do this very easily. Yeah. This one allows us to do it. You can just stay in the scenario and allow the scenario and explain the last scenario. Otherwise, you stop following that. No, I think why they're doing it. So I think that different with the subjects. Actually, we've discussed this, but if somebody wants to say something, mistakes, works, and so on, but we could think about the future. What can we develop? We know how we got here, but what can we do to be maybe better trainers, maybe to have our jobs, um, whatever, be happier, more relaxed in the future as a trainer? What can we develop? Yeah. I'm going to say what you've got. I made a switch from the classroom lab to the online. 
Yeah. there's no video on me, the webcam. I can do my Stevie Wonder while I'm talking. <laughs> and I like it because I, if I would do that in my classroom, so people would think, oh, is he, is he okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, the change is here. The change is coming always. Uh, this online is a big thing. Uh, so, any tips or tricks yeah. I, I feel like what we're talking about here is more like the online training is the same training as the classroom. But I'm seeing a change in the model of delivery of training, the coaching, uh, even you know, <coughs> personal trainer, like the same gym, and more, uh, maybe less, you know, classroom type. Yeah. one behind yeah together. Seth has one. Yeah, yeah uh, just expanding on what Tom and Magnus were both saying, consultative services are really where uh, a lot of, it's a, a little on the high end, most companies aren't willing to, uh, to go to the expense, but they'll find out that if they're doing something big, like moving over from Lotus Notes to Microsoft Exchange, they will hire consultants to come in and instead I hope of so. teaching uh, their, their own employees off-site, they'll bring the consultants on-site and say, this is our environment. How are we going to do this? How are we going to solve these problems here in this office yeah. and help our people get to where we need to go? How can we do this? Yeah. Marcus, yeah. Yeah. Um, remember, someone mentioned that the fact that you had some belief that they didn't want to go into a uh, classroom anymore. Uh, that's something I'd like to come back to because that is something that you hear either in certification or in training. Um, people don't receive the value. So 
training, uh, a lot of training. They hear things, hear things uh, they already know, they already achieve. So they want uh, specific training on specific subjects. And I think uh, to online learning, that's uh, yeah, going to be the key. Like the MTA, uh, Virtual Academy, uh, is wonderful. I don't know, uh, scroll through the videos and uh, take that subject out. Uh, I want to learn. And I don't go to a five-day training. Everything I know I uh, want to teach, I learn for myself by taking you know, my knowledge and just looking for the new things and the new ideas. And even an upgrade training in 2012 or R2 uh, has a lot of information that isn't new to me. So for me, it's an inefficient way of uh, you know, getting to know the new technology. Yeah. That's why I think it's interesting. How many in here go to five-day class? Yeah. Every week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And short, short comments because we are. There is something about the class. Sound like consulting. Okay. We, like yeah. We must be wrapping this up because my time is out. The discussion will continue, sauna or not. And uh, if I say that uh, there is still something in the training, we still have something to give. The technical details can be in the videos. We can produce the videos and so on. But uh, it's also about attitude towards learning. We think that some people should learn how to learn, that they are wasting their time and the employer's time by doing things at work because they have not acquired the certifications and the knowledge how to do the things right. So the discussion will continue, but I'm closing. Thank you and uh, Let's see if my PowerPoint will fail. Next time when you come to Finland, please come in the summer. <laughs> it's totally different here then. Yeah. Thank you.